Hello class, uh, this is a special screencast that is designed to go over the task analysis matrix that we would like you to use and complete for rotation C. Um, so uh, I know that Kathy Close is giving you a uh, the form that you see here on the screen and this screen should, um, not the screen, but the the uh, document sh is designed to kind of like guide you through um, what you need to put in each cell. Um, my goal is to just kind of um, add a little voiceover commentary about it for those of you who may need a little extra um, information that the sheet doesn't provide. But um, Kathy and I have been going back and forth and trying to uh, uh, perfect this. So we hope that it's, it's good and you can use it and get some use out of it. Okay, so um, there's a couple of things that I would like you to keep in mind as you work on this. Um, first, uh, we would like you to work with your guide teacher um, on complete, you know, Ah, I'm sorry. I'm going to try this again. You're going. We want. We would like you to work with your guide teacher in completing this matrix. So, um, so don't fret too much about it. But Kathy writes something that is very, very important. That is, this is meant to be instructional. So attempt to do it by yourself first. See what you can do on your own. Um, clearly you probably want to go and get the central focus from your guide teacher because your guide teacher knows what content will be taught at the time that you're going to be doing your rotation C um, and also for the EdTPA. So um, you'll need to confer with them on that issue but everything else Try to do it on your own at first. See what you can do on your own and what you can't do on your own. Then that's when you go to your guide teacher and you sit down and you work collaboratively. The other neat thing is that there's a chance that you and your guide teacher are like not clear what to put in this. And I don't want you or him or her to fret over that either. I would like you to just say, okay, we don't understand. And then you bring whatever you have to the first planning meeting. And at that time, the university liaison should be working with you and the other PLC members to help fill in this. This is meant to be an instructional matrix. We want you to learn how to um, plan a learning segment so that you can, you know, best figure out how to create three to five lessons that are coherent and that are building, um, um, build it, that build on top of each other. So that's what we would like for you to do. And that, let me just underscore that point because it's a very important point that I would like you um, to remember. And that is that this is designed to be a tool for you. It's not just a, you know, piece of bureaucratic worksheet that we want you to do for the PLC meeting. We intend this to be a tool that you would be using um, for the EdTPA, but more importantly, for yourselves as teachers, when you are planning your lessons, you know how to plan, um, a, you know, lessons that are designed to hang together, work together, to build a developing, uh, to, to build student skills over time. So uh, we hope that this is going to help you um, to that, uh, to reach that end. So here we go. I'm going to go over this pretty quickly. Um, the other thing about this is that this should be something that you are somewhat familiar with because you've done similar things for Kathy's class where you had to do the central focus and the summative assessment. And some of the items on here are things that you had to do for my class. 
So nothing on here really should be all that new, except for maybe this stuff here, but we talked about it. Um, but everything else that's in blue should be something that you've had some exposure to. And so therefore you should be um, able to somewhat complete it. So of course you need to, um, to uh, identify the standards, the central focus, we've talked about that. Then what we would like you to do is to engage in a bit of backwards planning and design your summative assessment. Spend your time really getting a sense of what you want for that summative assessment. If you're going to be, if your central focus is on summarizing text, what is it that you want your students to do? What is this, the, the summary that you want them to provide? Create that ideal sample from students. You know, just what it may look like if a student were to turn it in and did a great job, what would it look like? And then from that, you can work backwards to identify what the learning segment objective is and what are the related skills associated with it. So um, after you've designed your central focus, move on to design what your summative assessment is. Be very, very clear and descriptive about what that is. Work with your guide teacher if you can't do it on your own to design what that is. And then um, work backwards to identify what your learning segment objective or objectives are, um, and then um, what the related skills are for that lesson. Okay, so that we would like you to try to do before and complete so you can bring it in to the PLC meeting, the first PLC planning meeting. The other thing that we would like you to do is once you have that, then you can begin to sequence what the, um, what the lessons could be. So um, you will have to have, I think for a rotation, you should have uh, three, and we have here maybe a fourth lesson. So what is going to happen in your first day, your second day, third day, or fourth day? And um, a good way to think about that is going back up here to your summative assessment. When you remember in class, we had um, identified all those um, cognitive skills. When you take, especially if it's a high order thinking skill, if you break it down, um, you may find that you have some uh, sub skills, some low order thinking skills that are a part of the high order thinking skills. Well, maybe working on those low order thinking skills could be done on one or two days. So for example, summarizing, it could be that you want students to identify what the, who the characters are, or identify what the setting is, or identify all three with one book, and then identify all three of those, the, the characters, the setting, and the problem and solution, with a second book and then um, and do a, th a third day where they have to do it on their own. So there's different ways in which you can break that down. Um, remember we talked about um, making inferences and making inferences mean that first you need to be descriptive, finding descriptive information. So maybe day one, you focus in on finding those descriptive information um, in text or in pictures. And then day two, um, using that to decide, uh, synthesizing it to decide what does that mean. And then the third day, having them do that again with another picture, but doing it more independently. And then the fourth day is doing that again, but this time it's your summative assessment. So there's different ways in which you can break that down. Um, in day one, we want you to list what the learning objectives are for that. Um, maybe a, a broad description of what the instru uh, instructional activities are. And then um, design what a formal, a formal formative assessment is. Um, something that every student is going to complete. 
So that's what you can do. This is may seem like a lot of work, and yeah, it is. Um, um, so uh, um, I personally, I think if you did the top part first and, and get that done, then that's great. Um, but we would like you to try to get as much of this done um, before the PLC. So that includes this part. The last part that I think it's really worthwhile for you to do, and if you can't do it for the PLC meeting, then that's fine. But try to do it for the EdTPA, because basically what you're wanting to do is to take these subskills that are associated with the, the summative assessment, let's say describing or um, identifying the main characters. What you want to do is then try to figure out which which of your students can actually do this independently, these subskills independently, and which ones can do it with some help, and which ones can do it or who can't do it at all. And just try to figure out where your class is. Um, clearly, if it's going to be your objective, that is students will be able to summarize a text, you're suggesting that most of your students cannot do that at all or most can't do it with, um, they can do some of it with some help from the teacher. Um, but it's very good to know which of your students can do it independently. So this is the beginning of being able to differentiate your instruction in meaningful ways. So really try um, to do this for the EdTPA. This is something that maybe after the EdTPA I will ask you to do because I think it's really important so that you're not starting any lesson or any learning segment as if everybody's the same. It, it really shouldn't be that way. You should be able to know who are going to be the students who are going to have some struggle, who need some extra support, and be ready to give that support, and which students can actually do this on their own. So think about the balance beam activity. Clearly, Molly and Drexel understand the activity and know how to do it, and Susie and Tad don't. Well, wouldn't it have been nice if the teacher didn't see them all as just one entity, but could say to Molly or to Susie and Tad, here's a really nice um, way to think about it, or this is what I need for you to do, or this is some support for you that will help them be much more productive in that learning space. So that's what this is for. All right. So I hope this gives you um, some sense of how to complete this matrix. Don't stress over it is one thing that I would definitely recommend. Seek out support, especially for the stuff that you cannot do on your own. And really keep in mind what this is for. This is designed to help you um, design a learning segment. Um, a three to five day learning segment. So um, this might be a useful tool for you. All right. Uh, my dog is saying goodbye, and I am too. Bye-bye.